You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Today I am here with one of my favorite people, Laurie Watson. Laurie, welcome. Good to see you. Nice to see you, I'd too. I'd hug you if I could co come across the table. <laughs> Laurie, we go way back. Yes. yes. Way back. Way, and, way back. And what we're talking about today is something very special to you and special to me because it's about your grandmother. Yes. It's about Eugenia and it's Baskerville, did I Baskerville. get it right? Baskerville. Watson. Yes. Who was an educator at Bridgewater State. Yes. And she preceded me as a library trustee on the board. I'm actually sitting in her seat. And she was the clerk of this board that created Brockton Community Cable Television. But now you're doing an exhibit retrospective with some of her favorite topics. Tell us about it. Well, just so that everybody knows, I am so Brockton because my grandmother started her teaching, degree, teaching career actually at the Huntington. Okay. So she got her master's at Bridgewater State. Once she got her master's in 1970, she was part of a group called Educators in Africa. Mm -hmm. And they studied over there for about two years. She studied in a few of their um, universities, Nigeria, Ethiopia. Um, she also got to meet her second cousins, which are currently living in Kenya, so I have family there. Mm -hmm. But she was a lover of art, and she liked souvenirs. I think I get my shopping habit from her. Mm -hmm. She personally picked out well over 80 pieces and she sh shipped them home regularly. My grandfather built some shelves for her and we've had a collection of authentic African art my entire life. They were actually my toys growing up. Mm -hmm. I would play with them. Some of my favorite pieces are over in the show. But I'm 43 and she bought these back right before I was born. So they're almost 50 years old, if not so some of them older. So now you're gonna share them with the community. My grandmother was very big on, on Brockton. Mm -hmm. When she and my grandfather met in North Carolina a and she originally, it just immediately became a Brockton resident. And for her, that meant raising the community, doing what she could to make her mark or to elevate everyone. It wasn't a simple me sit statement, it was us. So she taught, she taught not only students, but she taught student teachers. Mm -hmm. Actually the student teacher mentoring program at Bridgewater State is still in in actuality and she's created that mm. but because of her love of art and culture and the fact that we didn't need to be around our own people all the time to know who we were now it's time to she's always brought it around and shared I took it to school my freshman year of high school mm -hmm. took over my history class but now my grandfather and I've been talking about it for at least 20 years and it hasn't been seen except anybody that's come to the house so now it's time and it's in a wonderful location, the new Enzo Flats. Fantastic building, fantastic management company. We have a ball over there. We've done, we've, our tenant association gets together. We had a Thanksgiving dinner. We, we enjoy each other over there. And it was simply the right things coming into place at the right time because my grandmother was very big on Brockton and changing Brockton and doing things for Brockton. Here I am in the, the cornerstone of the revitalization of downtown. And it just said to me, my grandmother would love to be a part of this. And the fact that she's been a part of the change in Brockton for years, it was, it was why we waited, I think. It, it, this is the right, right time. There's been so much interest in it. It's not even crazy. I have high school friends that have been sharing it on Facebook for mm -hmm. me. They're, everybody's excited though, I'm excited, and my grandfather doesn't even know that he's coming to see it, so I can't wait to see that. That's even better. So it's called African Heritage Art of East and West Africa, correct? Yeah, yes. Okay, and it started, it's already started? Yes, it is. And it's going through the 26th of April? Yes. Okay. Um, opening reception, we'll date it a little bit, but we'll run this all the way till the 25th. Opening reception is the 29th? Yes, the 29th at 6 p.m. Okay. And actually, we're going to have the shades up. We drew the shades the other day, and the shades are up constantly. So drive mm -hmm. by and pique some more interest. If you have some friends that come by town, take the long route, and maybe you guys can come in. I'm also, if, if you can't break the um, times of the, of the show, I'm around a lot, so you can contact me, and I have no problem. I have a private showing at 6 o'clock tonight. So how would they contact you? Um, right through the Enso Gallery um, email. Mm -hmm. And come on over to the gallery, come on over to the building. We love people coming in to see the building. Okay, so 
Uh, for those of you that aren't exactly aware where it is, it's on the corner of Montello and Center. If you know where the Dunkin' Donuts is and what I call the old United Furniture Building, W.B. Yeah. Mason is across the street. So that's exactly where it is. It's right in the heart of downtown. It was where the Gardner Building used to be. And the people, the management company, did a wonderful job of emulating the look yes. and the footprint of the building. But it's all modern and it's beautiful. I've yes. gone to a couple of the meetings over there. They're doing an art month coming up in, yes. in May. And this is kind of like the kickoff before it. Well, it's funny because we have artists that live in the building and we've got a wonderful fashion designer. So unfortunately, we lost a, a photographer too young, Dido. But of the artists in the building, we're all very supportive of each other's crafts. Me, I'm a chef, so it's like I don't have anything that I can display. But I'm hoping to get a few pieces in for the reception. <laughs> well, we've been talking about that whole part for yes. years, but we're not going to reveal it right now, <laughs> okay? So, um, so your grandfather's going to get a surprise. Yes. And your family's all supporting this. My family's coming. I'm hoping that my cousin comes up from Connecticut. She's at Baskerville. Okay. Um, so I, from what I understand, I have a Baskerville cousin that lives in Brockton. I've never met. You know what's funny? I have no. I knew the B in the name the whole time. I never knew what it stood for. Yeah. Because she, she didn't talk about it. Nope, but from what I understand, my cousin has told me that her name is Sheila. And if anybody knows her, I would love her to come to the show because Family is what Brockton's about. Family is what I've always been about. My grandparents were the first blacks on the west side, and they don't care about being first. They're not going to get moved, and you know something? That's what Brockton's about. That's the people that live in Brockton. That's why no matter where I've gone, I've always come home. Mm -hmm. So the, we're better to share my family than with the rest of my family. I did the same thing. I went away to school for two years, Florida. Biggest mistake of my life, not speaking Spanish, so I couldn't <laughs> stay there. But I didn't really want to. It was too fast a lifestyle. It was yeah. early 80s Miami Vice days. I came back when BCCT was founded. Yep. 1983. I sat in your grandmother's kitchen <laughs> because Pearl Stone had booked the country club. Yes. Thorny Lee. And for whatever reason, they lost the reservation. So I had a wonderful, uh, what she made, she made it a salad. It was a taco salad. It had one of those big taco shells. And we all had salad, and I got interviewed. I knew I had the job before I left the place. It was great. And then in 1994, I came back, and she was still on the board. She had given that many years of service. The library board, she did the same thing with. She was on the library board for a long time, and I have a special connection. People know me as the cable guy. My first job before I ever was in cable yeah. was at the library. Well, you so followed my grandmother's the history, too, between service to Brockton and service to the school because she was on the school committee. Right. She was on the library board. She was on the Fuller Art Museum board. Before, and I remember that. Cable. She's done amazing things. Not to mention, even after her retirement, she's, she's formed a chapter of DKG, which is an educational sorority. Right. And her civil service, my mother, my, my whole family. My mother was chair of the Arts Council. Yep. So, and, and, and among other things. So. It, it, I've been born into civil service. So if anybody wants to wonder why I don't have a solid career, it's because everything else has gone to doing things like this. And it makes me happy. Well, this is exciting. We're going we're gonna to be there. We're going to give people a sneak peek. But you've got to go live. You've got to go there and see it. Okay. Oh, no doubt. So, There's a couple of things that you can actually play with. Some of the drums I'm going to be putting some tap me please signs on. Perfect. The, Perfect. My favorite toy, which is a xylophone. It's all gourds underneath. It's sitting in the window. Okay, well, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna go. We're going to show you some stuff to give yes. me the cue. So you're watching Greater Brock and Mark Lindy, your host. Make sure you go over to see African Heritage Art of East and West Africa starting now through... Um, April 26th at Enzo Flats on 50 Center Street. Thanks for joining us.